What's going on guys? During this global reset, one of the things that's going to happen is the explosion of violent crime. And <clears throat> this is going to be in a series of categories. You've got the worthless people who will be committing crime, the demo people who will be committing crime, and the mentally ill. Now, the mentally ill they have a mental problem. They can't help themselves. But for the most part, most of the mentally ill people that I've come across have been pretty much harmless, except in the case of psychopaths. And psychopaths, that is a mental illness. But let me just go ahead and uh, read what came across my uh, UCLA grad student stabbed to death while working at LA luxury furniture store. A UCLA graduate student was stabbed to death last week in a random daytime attack while working at an upscale furniture store in Los Angeles, police said. Brianna Kufler, 24, was working along inside Croft Furniture on North Labria Avenue on Thursday about 1.50 p.m. when a man walked in, attacked her with a knife, according to the Los Angeles Police Department. He fled through the back door and was captured on surveillance cameras, casually walking down the rear alley behind the store, said in the press release. 20 minutes later, a customer entered the shop and found Cuffler in a pool of blood on the floor. The stunned shopper called 911. The suspect is to believe to be homeless. There's no known motive for the attack. Cuffler was working as a consultant at the high-end retailer, popular with celebrities like Mandy Moore, whose Pasadena home features a Croft house sofa. I want you to really think about that. For those of you who didn't know, I used to own a furniture store. One of the least drama-filled businesses ever. This is a signal of what's to come. This man walked into a furniture store and stabbed a girl who was working in the furniture store and walked out. There was no robbery. See, here, here's the thing that's going to go down with violent crime. As we go through the global reset, there will be more news reports like this. There will be more situations like this. Because here's the thing, when people don't have money, don't have access to money, don't have access to jobs, which is going to be a big problem in the global reset, they start to get desperate. And desperation leads to a lot of bad things. Um, once again, you will continue, just like with this worthless person, like once again, the classification. You have demo people, you have worthless people, you have mentally ill people, including psychopaths. So what's the difference between a, a demo person? A demo person is a person who loves chaos and destruction. A mentally ill person is someone who has a diagnosable mental illness and they just can't do any better. And the worthless people, these are people who, they, 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 they took a turn. They took a turn where they could have been a normal contributing member of society and they just chose not to. So you will have situations where this is going to become common. And with the spike in violent crime, petty crime is going to be like the purge. I mean, criminals are going to be able to steal cars. Like right now, I have five people up on stolen car charges. And you know, it's a process. First they get arrested and then they go to court, they bail out, they go to court. And then I'll be dealing with this next year, going to court for these people. But more than likely, because during this time frame, violent crime is going to go through the roof they're they're just not going to have the resources to deal with petty crime and yes car theft would be considered a petty crime they took your car did they put a gun in your head no they just took your car and if we have the option to put this murderer in jail versus this car thief Hands down, we're going to put the murderer in jail. That's where they're gonna go. Because 
I feel that the prison population over the next 10 years is going to dramatically swell with violent criminals and then violent criminals and career criminals. Because just like this poor girl who was working her job, someone just came in and stabbed her. Just stabbed this girl. I mean, it's horrible. And this is why you guys need to be vigilant. You need to watch her six. Um, because once again, I carry my gun pretty much every day. And one of the things that I do is try to avoid conflict situations. Like someone cuts me off, I just slow down and start backing up. I don't engage these people because you never know who's behind the wheel. You never know if you're dealing with a psychopath or a nutcase. I remember years ago, uh, this lady cut this dude off and dude was aggressive. He was in a pickup truck and she cut him off and zoomed the head. Next thing I know, the truck was zooming and then he literally rammed the rear end of her car. He rammed her car. You don't know who you're dealing with. So once again, I'm gonna say it again, be vigilant, watch your six, be careful out there because during this period, violent crime is going to explode. And then petty crime, and this is why I feel that we're gonna have a new wave of laws come in because essentially the police the police forces are already understaffed. That's already a given. They don't have enough resources. So take an understaffed police force and a rising violent crime rate, the resources, it's gonna be incumbent upon you, the citizen, to protect yourself. On, against petty crime. And this is why, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I feel that they're gonna change the laws. Like currently, you know, if you didn't know, someone broke my car window to look inside my vehicle because the windows were are tinted that you can't see inside it. They literally broke my tenant window just to look around in the car. Cost me 560 bucks. Now, if I was walking up on my car and saw this happen with my gun, I could not shoot this person because they did not pose a threat to me. I feel that with this explosion of violent crime, this explosion of petty crime, they're gonna change the laws where you're gonna be able to bust a cap in these people's asses because I feel it's gonna get ridiculous. I feel that the petty crime is gonna be if you live in the city, it's not going to be a time of if you will be impacted by petty crime. It would be a matter of when. That's the situation that I see. Because I just see it, it's just, it's just getting nuts. It's just getting nuts. It's getting ridiculous. It's getting uh, crazy. And one of the things that you have to be vigilant, and we're going to have this discussion, I feel that you should take advantage of the Second Amendment and arm yourself. And not only arm yourself, actually go to the range and learn how to use your firearm. Because the next five years are going to be, five to 10 years are gonna be rough. And here's the thing, if you are a productive and producing member of society that's doing well, Guess who these petty criminals are going to target? They're going to target you. They're going to come after you. And I can only imagine the crime wave that's going to happen in the hood. I can only imagine. And one of the things I'm seeing, because uh, I'm not going to make light of this because I think it's a terrible thing for a person to be homeless, but I've been noticing an increasing number of homeless people that I never saw homeless people before. That's a big, big signal. And with that homeless population moving in, the criminals are gonna move in. Uh, recently, someone that I know, I didn't know this person, but someone that I know knows this person who was a victim of a home invasion. They came in, put a gun to her head, put a gun to her daughter's head, and uh, took off with their cars. I was 
one degree away from that person and knowing them. And this kind of stuff, like in Mexico, kidnapping is common. In Mexico, home invasions are common. And murders are common in Mexico. And what we're going to see here in the United States of America is a parallel to what's going on in Mexico. Because during this global reset, and I want you to understand what is happening um, is the social economic chasms or gaps are widening. The, you know, the difference between the super rich, the like Elon Musk, and the top 10% is billions of dollars. And the difference between the top 10% and the lower economic strata is hundreds of thousands, and in some cases, millions of dollars. So there's these gulfs between the super rich and the, you know, the 9.9%, .9%, the 10%. These are people who make 150 to about $450,000 a year. That would comprise your 9.9%. .9%. And that is the buffer zone between the super class, the super wealthy, and everyone else. Because uh, I did some research, and do you know 130 million people in America don't make $50,000 a year? And this is single person income. And we only have 160 million people in the workforce. So the majority of America is so far from that 9.9%, .9%, which is just a buffer zone, which is a, it's a, it's a comfortable zone. If you're making 150 to 450, you can afford this inflation. You can afford to feed your family. You can afford to put gas in your car. You can afford a house. You can afford the American dream. But if you're not in that 9.9%, .9%, you can't afford it. You cannot afford it. And one of the things that is going to happen as we go forward, because I was watching, um, you know, Lost in Space, and apparently the Earth is deteriorating and they're sending these people out to Alpha Centurion, this new settlement where people were going to go. Um, I think in the future, that's going to become a thing. I think in the future, it's going to be, I don't know if we're just going to have like a oasis here on earth where the wealthy live, but the, the separation between the wealthy and the non-wealthy is going to become more pronounced and more distinct. And you're going to literally, you're going to have these beautiful cities maybe with walls around them where virtually no crime happens. And then you're gonna have the bad lines and the, the, the places out the, like the South Side where crime is the norm, where you, it's just gonna be crazy because um, like I said, this girl who's working in the furniture store, minding her business, was killed by someone who came in and attacked her. Once again, this is a signal of what's to come. This is a signal. And like I said, my friends, be careful out there and avoid conflict because once you get into a conflict zone, if you get in conflict with a crazy person, I should say avoid conflict with people who have nothing to lose. Um, someone made a really good point with these people stealing my rental cars. They're not worried about jail. They have nothing to lose. They've already been to jail. They're not worried about this stuff. So if you are a person who's a productive person, who has a house, a family, a wife, kids, and all this other stuff, you actually have something to lose and you do not want to engage with these people who absolutely have nothing to lose. You don't want to engage with them. Like, you just don't because these demo people, these worthless people, these mentally ill people, I feel their numbers are going to explode. Also with the violent crime rate, with the petty crime rate, this stuff is going to explode. And one of the things that you can do to protect yourself, and th this gets a little out there, is go around your house and, go around your house and 
see if you can fortify your house. You might want to replace your doors with, because a lot of doors are hollow. You may want to replace your doors with solid doors. You might actually want to put a metal security door on your house. Um, you might want to uh, put bars on your window. I'm serious. You may want to fortify your house where no one can just break into it in the middle of the night easily. You want to make sure that your windows are good. You want to make sure, you know, your garage locks. You, you want to really conduct a security check of where you live because it's coming. It's coming. It's coming because I could literally do an hour long video just reading the headlines of people who were killed by somebody crazy right now. And this is just the beginning. <laughs> it is just the beginning. So once again, make sure that you're vigilant. Make sure that you avoid conflict with people who have nothing to lose because they have nothing to lose. I mean, you know the story about the guy with the butter? Dude pulled out a gun and put, aimed it at somebody over some butter. This is the mentally ill. This is the economically fragile. These people are dangerous. They're dangerous and you want to stay away from them. You want to keep your, yourself, your family, your friends away from these people because as the global reset starts to roll because it's 2022 and i feel that we will be in a recession in 2023 depending on what happens this year we will have to look at the numbers we have to see if unemployment keeps going up which i feel that it will and the, we will be in a crazy state we will be in a situation where it's going to be very very dangerous if you remember New York, when Giuliani was the mayor, New York was a criminal hotbed. And then they they just like, they violated people's constitutional rights because when crime gets to a certain level, people are not gonna care about their constitutional rights. It's like, we need to do something about this crime. We need to work on this. We need to handle this. And this is where people are gonna be working on. This is what people are gonna be focused they're going to be focused on that. They're going to be focused on that. So once again, and also with the dramatic shedding of jobs, because like right now, you know, the, the great resignation, people are quitting their jobs, they're going to other jobs. In the future, if you quit your job, they're going to, you're going to be replaced by automation. And then you, there will be no job for you to hop or skip to. In the future, I'm saying the next 20, 25 years, I feel that that's going to be a really distinct reality. And with this hard pressed to find jobs, because once again, many of the people, like I did my video the other day, my encounter with a demo person, many of these people have extremely poor communication skills. They don't know how to communicate dude actually became demeaning and insulting and he was trying to get something from me that ain't how it works i immediately ended the conversation blocked him and deleted the chat and moved on with my life but you will see the the finesse crowd the charisma crowd the swag crowd like you know uh, i got people i know that i'm asking five thousand dollars for that car they only have 1,500 and 2,000, and they feel that their negotiation skills, they can get me to come off that 5,000. Ain't gonna work, ain't gonna work. But once again, these people don't have any reality. And on that, I am going to conduct a class on how to sell stuff online. I'm gonna put that together, and I'll let you guys know about this because so many people are trying to make money and they, they're, they're doing it the wrong way. They're, they're, they're patently doing it the wrong way. And I've been consistently able to get more money from my stuff than the average seller. Number one, never be desperate. <laughs> That's the first thing. Like, uh, 
My iPhone, I sat on that for three weeks to get the price that I wanted. Uh, I will sit on this car into tax season to get the price that I want because I know what the market will bear and everything. So I will probably put together a class and I'll let you guys know exactly the things that you need to sell online and how you do it. I'll put together a class and for those in the corporate toolbox and the corporate papers, you will get this free. I'll just add it to your bundle. But man, it's about to get crazy out here in these streets. All right, so that's all I got for you guys today, uh, 7 p.m. I'm gonna be doing a second training. For those who are interested, the link will be below and at least get the free training on how to handle your money. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.